Okay, well, it's a great pleasure to have Sir Hela Feitzbach joining from Imperial College London, and who will speak about higher rank DT theory from rank one. Okay, great. Thanks all for the invitation. So um, before starting, let me just tell you a brief story about the goal of this project. You know, after appearing Donaldson Thomas theory to count uh, stable shifts on Kabia threefold uh, of fixed rank, uh, MNOP conjecture came up, which was saying that uh, all of rank DT theory uh, for rank one is equivalent to Gromovitan theory. So the immediate question is uh, whether higher rank DT theory gives us new information about our threefold or um, they are just completely uh, governed by rank one DT theory, which by MNOP conjecture is equivalent to uh, Germain Witten theory. So when I started my job at Imperial around three years ago, Richard uh, Richard Thomas suggested that we start to think about this problem uh, via bridge line stability conditions and work causing techniques. But uh, after a short uh, time of thinking about this problem, we have noticed that uh, via our technique, we can uh, we should first go. Uh, from any higher rank to uh, to rank zero DT invariance. So we first start with the rank one case and uh, start to understand the rank one DT theory in terms of rank zero DT invariance. And surprisingly, we have noticed that it has a very nice application to not a less stressful side. And uh, we could also write all of this um, uh, rank uh, one DT theory, which means counting of uh, curves and points in terms of rank zero DT invariance, which is subject to the uh, famous astrology conjecture in physics. Um, after that, by developing the techniques for rank one and uh, do several uh, so our induction process, we we could uh, show that whole of rank R DT theory is governed by rank zero DT invariance. So the final phase of our project to, to gain our final goal is, uh, is to write down all of this rank zero DT invariance in terms of PT invariance. And uh, by, by the work of Toda or Birchlein, we know that PT theory is equivalent to rank one DT theory. So it just completes the aim of the project. Okay, so I'm going to briefly explain uh, the results and the idea of the techniques that we had for rank one and rank bigger than one and quickly say what we have done for rank zero, which is, uh, which is almost complete. Okay, so I will first fix my setup and explain my main result. As I said, to prove the result, we use weak bridge line stability conditions. So I will quickly explain what's this notion of the stability conditions and what costs with respect to this notion, and then uh, explain the idea of the proof. And finally, explain the final work causing formula that we gain out of work causing with respect to weak bridge line stability conditions. Okay. So for, for the first uh, for the first part, we can just assume that X is a is any smooth. Uh, projective threefold uh, with the polarization O1, and I will I'm going to denote by H the first chain class of this polarization. So the classical notion of a slope of stability for uh, for vector bundles over curves can be generalized to mu H stability uh, for for coherent sheaves on any variety, and and so the slope mu H of E is just basically defined as degree over rank. It's just churn one dot h square over churn zero. If churn zero is not equal to zero, otherwise we define it to be plus infinity. And we say a coherent sheaf is mu h semi stable if for all non trivial subsheaf, the slope of the subsheaf e prime is bigger than or equal to the slope of the quotient e over e prime. So, in particular, this implies that any slope semi stable sheaf must be torsion free. We know any, uh, any slope semi stable sheaf satisfy the classical Bogomolov inequality, which says that the discriminant of E, which is churn one square minus two churn zero churn two, can, uh, uh, is always non negative. Okay, but as you see here, we only see the information of churn zero, churn one, and churn two. So when we are working on, for example, for threefold, we are missing the information of churn three. 
Then it was, I think, around 2011 that Bayer, Macri, and Toda generalized this mu H stability on coherent sheaves to new beyond W stability on the bound drive category of coherent sheaves for any pair of beyond W uh, in R2. I will, I will explain uh, in full details what is this notion of a stability. Uh, but they've, they've proved that any new beyond W semi-stable object satisfies uh, the classic of Bogomolov inequality. But as, as I said, it doesn't have any information of chain tree. That's why they conjecture a Bogomolov physical type inequality, which involves a uh, chain tree of, uh, uh, of objects for, for a new beyond W semi-stable objects. Um, we now know that this holds for many trifolds, uh, such as particular space or, or the quantitative trifolds. I will give more example later on. Okay. Um, but uh, for, for the first part of the talk, we, we only need a weakening version of this BMT conjecture, not the full one. And as far as we are aware, the counterexamples that we have for the original BMT conjecture are not really valid for this weakening one. So, so actually proof of this weakening one is much easier than the original one. Uh, so we hope that maybe this could be true for any triples. So uh, I start with the class beta in, uh, in the image of the force rational cohomology and an integer m. And, um, take the chain character one zero minus beta and minus n. Then we first consider uh, the Hilbert scheme of sub scheme C inside X of dimension one with topological type beta and n. So the modular space of the slope semi-stable sheet of chain character V or one zero minus beta and minus n is just the product of the Hilbert, uh, this Hilbert scheme with uh, pick zero of X, which is a space of all line bundles with torsion C1. Okay, so just note that here, it doesn't matter what's the notion of the uh, stability that we want to, that we choose, it just uh, parameterize all torsion free sheaves of class one zero minus beta minus M. Okay, then the second modular space that I want to consider is modular of Joyce song pair. So I just, Peak and torsion free sheaf of class V and S is just a non zero section from OX minus N. Okay, so we know that both these two shapes are torsion free. That's why S is injective and I can look at its co kernel. But we know that um, when N is large enough, the generic section is, uh, is supported on a divisor D in NH. So it is of rank one. So it's automatically stable. Um, and we know that co-kernel of S is always of uh, chain character VN, which is super special is zero NH minus beta minus N square H square over two and minus M plus N cube HQ over six. You know, the fact that make it very special is, uh, is a point that beta and M uh, is chosen at the beginning, and then we choose N very large, okay? So the third moduli space is the moduli space of H Gisiker semi-stable two-dimensional torsion shapes of chain character V. So the first results, uh, uh, our first result says that this three moduli space carry basically the same information. So, so, so if you fix beta and M as I, uh, as I explain and then choose N large enough, and we suppose that this weakening version of BMT conjecture holds on X. Then the first column is that for all sheaves of chain character Vn, Gieseker and slope stability and semi-stability all coincides. So if my, if my sheaf of character Vn is a slope semi-stable, then it, it must be a uh, slope stable. So the module of joy sign pair is just the projective bundle over the product of this Hilbert scheme with pick zero of x. And, uh, and the main claim is here that we have a well-defined map from the product of joy, in the moduli space of joy sign pair with pick zero of x to moduli of slope semi-stable shape of class Vn. So this map just, just take any joy sign pair, which is IC tensoring with T is just a torsion free shape of class V. And by take a section, 
and then look at the quotient of that uh, section and then tensory with this line bundle L, with, uh, which is, uh, is C1 is, uh, is torsion. Okay, and the claim is that this map psi is actually an isomorphism. So, so, so the first part that it says is well defined says that it just any uh, for any section of uh, any section of this torsion free sheaf co kernel is always a slope semi stable, but the the second claim is that all of the slope semi stable sheaf of class V n that I've uh, written it also here um, can be obtained as the co kernel of a joist sign pair. So, so they must be all uh, rank one sheaves on, on their support. And since they, uh, after tensoring by a line bundle, they, they are precisely co-kernel of a joy sign pair, uh, the, uh, this rank one sheaves all are anti-effective. Okay, and- Sorry, may I ask a question? Sure. I, in the previous slide, so, uh, uh, does that mean that this uh, MAXHVN somehow contains two, co uh, two product of uh, peak zero? Like for the first one, there's a, like um, the JSNV is a PN fabrication over this product. Uh, exactly, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah. So we have uh, one choice of peak uh, line bundle here, but uh -huh. in uh, and we want to consider all torsion free sheaves of class V. So it's right. just product of this Hilbert scheme with peak zero of X. Yeah, yeah, right. I see, I see. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure that I yeah. <laughs> great sense. Yeah, right. So, so, so the fact that in this rank one sheaf after tensoring by draw of a line bundle with torsion C1 is anti effective immediately implies that beta H is less than or equal to zero. It's immediately implies that beta H is bigger than or equal to zero. So if beta H is smaller than zero, then this marginalized space must be empty. And actually, if it's not, uh, if it's not the case, then the churn, churn tree of our uh, sheaves uh, have always, uh, is always less than the value minus n plus n cubed h cubed over six. Okay. Uh, so let's just look at one example. So the case that beta H is equal to zero. So as an example, we can just take a line bundle L on, um, on a divisor D in the linear system in H, such that L dot H is equal to zero. Then if you look at the push forward of um, this line bundle to the threefold X, we, have, we can see that its chain character is similar to the chain character of Vn. And for for the case that beta h is equal to zero, okay, then if L square is 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 uh, is very large, is large enough, uh, we can apply a similar Wachowski argument as we did for for the class V n. So we could show that for any irreducible divisor d in the linear system n h and any line bundle l on d uh, such that c1 of l is not equal to zero in rational cohomology and, and l dot h is equal to zero, then uh, for n large enough, l square must be less than or equal to minus two n plus four. So the point is if l square is bigger than minus two n plus four, then, then chain three of the push forward of uh, this line bundle is high enough so that we can show that uh, the, this, this push forward of this line bundle is actually obtained as the co kernel of a joy sunk pay. So we have seen that this means that um, this line bundle is actually anti effective, which is not possible by the fact that L dot H is equal to zero. And we reach a contradiction. Okay. This upper bound is actually a uh, sharp for, for projective space because if we consider two disjoint lines L1 and L2, and then consider the line bundles of OD of L1 minus L2, um, then we have L dot H is equal to zero, but L square is precisely minus two and plus four. Okay. So regarding 
regarding this theorem, the classes on D which are not restricted from X are the most interesting ones. So one, one source of these examples uh, are vanishing cycles. Vanishing cycles are the cohomology classes of two spheres in D, which are contracted to nodes as we deform D in the linear system in H to nodal hypersurfaces. And we know that they have a square minus two. So, so this theorem says that they cannot be the class of, uh, class of the line bundles. That's why they have empty node electrodes loci. And in fact, since we can go up to minus two and plus four, we can actually show that uh, in minus, at most n minus three, disjoint vanishing cycles has empty uh, no interaction locus. Okay, now I want to uh, explain what's the meaning of the first theorem that I've said in, uh, in, in curve counting. So suppose X is a Kabia trifold with a canonical bundle and H1 of OX vanishes. So in all the three moduli space that, that I've described, these Hilbert schemes and the moduli space uh, of physical semi-stable shapes of class VN, we have seen that semi-stability is equal to a stability. That's why they all carry symmetric obstruction theory with virtual cycles of dimension zero. Uh, and we can look at their degree. So for the first one is just count of ideal shapes of curves and points, which we denoted by I and beta of X. Uh, so this just curves and point of class beta and M. And these are con uh, conjecturally equivalent to ground width and theory of X. And the second one is count of D4, D2, and D0 brains, or just counting of D secure two dimensional torsion shapes of uh, class Vn. And these are subject to the uh, s duality conjecture in physics, uh, which, which expects that um, these counting variants have some modular properties. Okay. So as an immediate result of the, the first theorem that I've said, we can actually show that as soon as n is large enough and uh, this weakening of BMT conjecture holds on x, then uh, omega Vn of x, which counts physical semi-stable shapes of class Vn, is equal to the product of Nn with i and beta of x, which just uh, counting of curves and points of class beta and m. And Nn here is just, uh, you know, we have, we need to choose the section and also two, uh, two line bundle with torsion C1. That's why an n up to sign just chi of Vn and, um, uh, and the square of the number of the uh, torsion element in the second rational cohomology. Okay, so, so this theorem uh, gi uh, gives us uh, that we can write um, any rank one DT theory uh, in terms of very special rank zero DT invariance. Okay. So the next step is to generalize this theorem to higher ranks to, uh, to just show that all of these rank, higher rank DT theory are completely governed by rank zero DT ranks. Okay, so before I go to the next slide, is there any question? Okay, if not- uh, I may ask, uh, sure. is this square coming from like all our characteristic of a uh, peak zero? So this in, in this uh, formula for an N? Uh, you mean here, or like I, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I mean, is that the first one coming from PN fabrication, the second one coming from like the Ola Kessler of peak zero? Yes, yep. Uh -huh. The square then coming from the two peak Two zero. copies, that, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. That's great, thanks. Okay, so, 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 when we go to higher rank, we need to consider the moduli space of or disjoint semi-stable sheaves of class alpha. So in my notation, when this uh, MH of semi-stable of alpha is just semi-stable sheaves of that class alpha, and the other one is uh, the ones which are strictly stable. So 
if if a semi stability is equal to a stability, which means that we do not have any strictly semi stable shape of cas alpha, then thus on Thomas defined the invariance J alpha, which which counts a stable shape, physical stable shapes of cas alpha. So you can think of J alpha as just a sign topological Euler characteristic of this modular space. Okay. But, but when, um, we when we have a strictly semi-stable shifts, then the theory gets more complicated and Joyce and Sun define a generalized Dawson Thomas uh, invariance J alpha, which are rational number because, uh, because, uh, because of the complicated contribution of a strictly semi-stable shifts. Okay, so this rational number is just virtual counts H key secret semi stable shapes of that class alpha. And we know that this invariants satisfy two important properties. The first one is that they are deformation invariants. And the second one is they satisfy a wall crossing formula. So, say that if we have uh, two weak stability conditions um, on X, then um, there exists an explicit change of stability condition formula, which, which gives that uh, J2, all of these invariant, accounting invariance of semi-stable shifts with respect to two in terms of all counting invariance uh, of semi-stable shifts with respect to tau tilde. Okay. So using a, uh, Using wall causing with respect to which bridge line stability conditions that I will explain, we have uh, shown that for any caveat three fold uh, satisfying the conjecture of BMT conjecture, uh, we have the following that for any fixed class V in the numerical group in the group of X of rank bigger than or equal to one, we have. Uh, J of V is equal to a universal polynomial in invariance J alpha I, uh, where each of these alpha I is of rank zero and, dim uh, and dimension two. So it just says that all of this rank, um, higher rank DT theory, which, can, uh, which, which, which counts uh, Giesecker semi-stable shifts of Chern character V, can be obtained uh, by universal uh, polynomial in terms of uh, rank zero DT invariance, which counts um, pure dimensional uh, dimension two, uh, two shapes. Okay, so if there is no question, so I, I, um, I want to briefly explain what is weak stability conditions and, and, uh, and then I go to the some, some ideas of the proof. So as I, as I said at the beginning, we have um, the notion of mu H stability for coherent shapes. It's just defined as churn one over churn zero. If churn zero is non-zero, otherwise it defined to be pulse infinity. We know that uh, for any coherent shape, uh, there exists a unique Harden-Eisman filtration with respect to slope stability. And, um, uh, and I'm going to denote by mu h plus of e and mu h minus of e the maximum and the minimum slope in the hardened Eisman filtration of e. Okay. Then, um, then uh, I want for any b in R, we want to consider the ability, and we want to consider the full subcategory a b of this bounded drive category of coherent shapes, which uh, whose object are are two term complexes. E minus one d e zero such that mu h pulse of kernel of d is less than or equal to b and mu h minus of co kernel of d is uh, bigger than b. So it's proved by a Tom Bridge line that a b is actually the heart of a bounded structure on the x. So in particular, it is an abelian category, and we want to replace the the classical category of coherent sheaves that we had before with this new abelian category AB. So we need to define a suitable notion of a slope as we have here for this uh, new abelian category. So the notion of the slope is, is different. so for, for any W bigger than B square over two, we can define a slope which depends on this two variables B on W as the uh, churn two of E minus W churn zero of E over churn one 
bh of e dot h square. So here, chern bh of e minus notation is just the cup product of chern of e with e to the power of minus beta h. And uh, so if chern 1 bh of e is, uh, is equal to zero, we define the slope to be pass infinity. You know, the point is that if you look at the definition of the objects in this abelian category, you can easily show that chern 1 bh of e uh, dot h square is always non-negative. So it behaves like rank in, in the classical notion of a slope of stability that we had for coherent shapes. So again, new B and W slope for any B and W is again degree over rank. That's why we define new B and W semi-stability uh, in a similar method as we have as we define new H stability. So, before, uh, so maybe I should say that you know, the denominator and enumerator here are basically the minus real over imaginary and imaginary part of the central charge for a stability condition uh, uh, on surfaces, which was first introduced by Tom Bridgeland. Then, um, then I, I, I think it, uh, it, it has been uh, extended to other surfaces and then by wire macri -Toda, this notion of new B and W stability is defined on, on the category of, uh, on the category B for, for the case of triples. Okay, so we say um, E in this bound drive category is new B and W semi-stable if, um, some shift of E lies in our heart AB. And for all non-trivial sub-objects of uh, this shift, uh, shift of E, we have a slope of F is less than or equal to a slope of the quotient. So the quotient here is defined in the abelian category AB. Okay. Then uh, by Macri and Tudor proved the new B and W stability satisfy um, hard and nice from property. That's why uh, they, uh, they define a weak bridge line stability conditions uh, on, on X. Okay, so, but the key, the key properties of this notion of stability is that um, we have actually two dimensional family of stability conditions. So they are continuously changing. So if you consider the space U above the parabola W equal to B square over two, corresponding to any point beyond W, we have a notion of new beyond W stability. But the point is that when we move along this space U, uh, this new beyond W stability continuously changing. So this immediately gives us that there exists a wall and chamber structure on this space U, which, uh, which, which says that for any fixed character V in this numerical Gaussian group of X, then there exists a set of lines Li in R2, such that the line segment Li cap U, which lies inside U, uh, which we call the walls, are locally finite and satisfy two important properties. The first one is that new beyond W stability of E of class V is unchanged when we are in the connected component between, chamber, between walls, which we call them chambers. And along each of these walls, there exists a strictly new beyond W semi-stable objects um, of, of class V, uh, such that this object is unstable at least in one of the adjacent chambers to this wall. Okay, so the final thing that I want to say about weak stability conditions is the BMT conjecture, uh, which is a Bogomov district type inequality for, for new beyond W semi stable object. So it says that any new beyond W semi stable object satisfy the quadratic inequality, uh, Q beyond W of E. Um, and says it's, it's, it's non-negative. So in this notation, CI is hmm, churn I of E dot H to power of T minus I. So as you see, this, 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 uh, this function Q of E is linear with respect to B on W, okay? And the, uh, the coefficient of W here, multiple of W here is, is basically the, the discriminant of E, 
just C1 minus 2, C0, C, uh, C2. And we, we, and we know that for any new beyond W semi-stable object, this discriminant is non-negative. That's why the inequality that Q of E is bigger than or equal to zero, just says that uh, our object E can be uh, can be new beyond W semi-stable for beyond W only above the wall that is defined for uh, that is defined with the equation of Q beyond W of E equal to zero. Okay, so so you you will see um, so you will see in in my proof um, an example of um, a applying this, this conjecture. So is there any question up to now? Uh, okay, if not, I want to explain now um, how we can apply these weak stability conditions uh, to, to prove our results. So yeah, before going uh, before going to that proof, let me just give you some uh, some of the examples that we know BMT conjecture holds. Um, probably probably it's possible that I missed some 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 recent papers, but we know there is proof for particular space and quadratic table or any final table of Picard rank one, or for abelian tables or a Cabell table of abelian type and Kummer trifold or product of an abelian variety and pn, or when x is a, has nef tangent bundle, and we have these two nice examples of caveat trifolds, which one of them is quintic trifolds, and the other one is a general weighted hypersurface in, in some weighted particle space. So for the last two examples, just a kind of restricted BMT conjecture uh, proof. So it's slightly weaker than the original one, but we have checked that um, this day version actually are, are enough for all of the results uh, that we have. Okay, so, so let, let, me, let me just now uh, explain um, how we use this, this weak stability conditions in our argument. So if we start with an arbitrary chain character, we are d minus beta times m and assume that r is positive for now. Okay. So the first thing that we know that you know is um, new beyond w semi-stability in the large volume limit when w is very large matches with tilt stability. So Tilt stability is a kind of a stability between slope stability and Gieseker stability. So, uh, you know, for a slope stability, we use the first two uh, two coefficients of in uh, in the Hilbert polynomial. But uh, for Gieseker stability, we use the full four terms. But for tilt stability, we use the uh, the first uh, three terms. So tilt stability somehow is is blind to chain three. And it's expected from, from this, this, this statement because you know, as, you, as you have seen in the notion of new beyond W stability uh, and new beyond W slow, we, we didn't see any information of chain three. It only depends on chain zero, chain one, and chain two. Okay. So, so note that here, although the harsh you know, new beyond W stability is defined in the oblivion category AB, but tilt stability is defined on the category of coherent shapes. But, uh, but uh, as it was, I think, first noticed by Tom Bridgeline himself that um, when we choose W very large, uh, these this two notion of stability match together, okay? So now the goal is that we start uh, that we study the moduli space of Gieseker semi-stable or tilt semi-stable shapes of class V. So the first uh, way that we can think of it is that we start in the large volume limit. So we know that all of our objects uh, are new beyond W semi-stable up, new beyond W semi-stable. Then we can gradually move down and then we can describe all possible walls for class V. Uh, and study all these tilt semi-stable objects. But in this way, there are two main problems. The first one is that describing all possible walls for such an arbitrary class V is, is too difficult. You know, the destabilizing factors could be very strange two-term complexes, not necessary shapes. That's why it's very hard to control these walls. 
And the second problem is we want that after crossing finitely many walls, we reach to an empty space. So we want that all of our teal semi-stable shapes gets unstable at one of the walls. So we get the chance to study them along the wall. Uh, but, but of course, for an arbitrary class, it's not possible to have such a kind of clean picture. There could be teal semi-stable sheaves, uh, which are stable in the large volume limit, and they remain semi-stable up to the end, and they don't see any wall. That's why uh, we have these two main problems in this pair. But to overcome these two problems, we use a joy sign pair. So just take n very large and any section s um, from ox minus nh to e. We know that both these two, uh, these two shapes are torsion free. That's why s is injective. And we look at the co-kernel of s, okay? We know co-kernel of s lies in this exact triangle in, in the drive categories, but we can choose this abelian category ab uh, you know, we can choose B, uh, this real number B, such that this exact triangle lies in this abelian category AB. So it's a kind of short exact sequence in our abelian category. And we know uh, that chain character of co kernel of S is, uh, that I'm going to denote it by VN, is, as I said, uh, for the case of rank zero, is super special because it's of uh, rank R minus one, and then we have D minus beta and minus M, which was chosen at the beginning, and then we choose N very large, okay? Then you see why, uh, uh, why it's a super special character, and uh, the fact that it, uh, you know, we have a very special character helps us, uh, that we, we, we can describe all wa uh, walls of instability for this chain character, okay? So, First of all, we know that there is a line LJS in, um, in R2, such that if I take any point B0 and W0 in LJS, uh, which lies also in the open subspace U, then any teal semi-stable shift of class B is new B and W0 semi-stable. So this basically means that um, this line LJS lies in the large volume limit for class V. So, so all of my teal semi-stable sheaf of class V are, are new B0 and W0 semi-stable along uh, this line LJS. And we also know they have the same slope with respect to new B0 and, B0 and W0 as OX minus N shifted by one, okay? So and we, uh, since OX minus N uh, is of discriminant zero, they don't have and they don't see any wall. So they always uh, uh, stay bar with respect to any B on W. That's why if you look at this exact sequence in our abelian category AB, we can see that this shift, this tilt semi-stable shift E and OX minus N H shifted by one are both new B0 and W0 semi-stable of the same slope. That's why the extension Cochrane of S is also new B0 and W0 semi-stable of the same phase as them. But we can show that if we move a little bit above this line LJS, then a slope of E gets smaller than slope of OX minus N shifted by one. That's why Cochrane of S is a stable above the joist, above this LJS. But below the wall, the slope of E gets bigger than slope of OX minus N shifted by one. That's why Cochrane of S is unstable. So, so by definition of the walls, LJS, this line is, is above for objects of class VN, which in particular uh, destabilize or co-kernel of this joist on pairs. And, we, and that's why we call them, uh, we call this wall uh, uh, joy song wall. Okay, so let me uh, show you in that picture. So, so before, uh, before going to that one, let me just explain one more thing. So, um, we can see all information of these tilt semi stable sheaves. Um, uh, 
inside this joy song wall because all of these teal semi-stable sheaves remain semi-stable up to this uh, joy song wall. Okay, that's why instead of do wall crossing for cas B, we can do wall crossing for for cas V N. Okay, so again we start in the large volume limit. The in the large volume limit. All of these teal semi all of these new beyond W semi stable object of CAS VN are tilt semi stable sheaves. And then there could be several walls for CAS VN, and one of them is LJS, where the destabilizing factors are E and OX minus N shifted by one. And then we move down, and there could be several walls below LJS. So the first advantage of working with CAS VN is existence of a line LF <coughs> where there is no semi-stable object of uh, class VN below this line. <coughs> like if we apply BMT conjecture, we can show that there exists a line LF such that below this line, there is no new beyond W semi-stable object of class VN. Okay, and the good point is that if we choose n uh, large enough, we can control uh, the intersection of the line LF with the boundary of uh, U, and we can make it close enough to to the joy sound wall. And it, this 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 fact helps us a lot to control all walls for Caspian. Okay, so let's start first with the case R equal to one. Then we know that there is no wall for, it's not hard to show that there is no wall for cas Bn above LJS. So, so we, have, we have seen that co-kernel of S is a stable above uh, joy sound wall. So since there is no wall, it's just basically semi-stable uh, in the large volume limit. And in particular, it is slow semi-stable. And this immediately gives that the co kernel of the joy sound wall is slope semi stable. And so this map psi that I've defined in the first theorem is well defined. But by, by analyzing the destabilizing factors along all other possible walls for Caspian below the joy sound wall, we can actually show that. <coughs> There is also no wall uh, below LJS, and Joyson wall is the only wall that we that we have for Caspian. So this means that uh, all of these tilt semi-stable sheaves of Caspian, which for rank zero case, you know, in the case of R equal to one, Vn is of rank zero, and for when uh, R when rank is equal to zero, tilt stability matches with slope stability. So, so all of these slope semi-stable shapes are new beyond W stable in the large volume limit. And by the fact that we only see joy song ball, and we know that uh, they should get destabilized before the line LF, we, have, and we can see that uh, they should all destabilize along LJS. So it means that they must be co kernel of a joy song pay. So, uh, and so the, uh, the map psi is bijective. <coughs> In fact, I've just explained that psi, why psi is surjective. It is injective because if, um, if I look at the co kernel of a joy sign pair, then, uh, <coughs> um, uh, then after crossing the joy sign wall, uh, E and OX minus N shifted by one, um, or maybe better say L twisting by minus N shifted by one, because this, this is the place that this uh, line bond with torsion C1 is coming up. These are uh, the hard, uh, hard and nice map filtration of uh, this co-kernel and, um, and the uniqueness of the hard and nice map filtration implies injectivity of this map. Okay, hey, so if there is no question, I can go to higher rank, but- Sorry, um, can, can I ask a question? So in, in this rank one case, I think if this MXH of VN, this is some kind of relative Hilbert scheme for Hilbert scheme of points on a hyperplane section, so. Okay, yes, I think so, yeah. And I mean, 
So, so are you claiming something like if you pick such a divisor and then you pick a um, ideal sheaf of points in there, that there's in particular you, you seem to be claiming something like there's a unique way to extend this these points to a curve in the three points? Or? Uh, yes, I I think so. Yeah, but um, you know, but the tricky point for for the tricky part at the beginning was um that they all uh, are of rank one on a divisor, and they could not be higher rank like the bundle. Uh, can I say something? Sorry to interrupt. Sure. sure. So, Aaron, the, the, the it's not just points; it's curves as well. So um, if you mo most of these hyperplane sections won't contain uh, the, the relevant curve class won't be um, what do I want to say? There won't be any curves in the right class. The, you know they, if you need you need the hyperplane, the surface, to be in the appropriate no to left shit's locus. So you need you need the surface to have um, line bundles and curves in it of an appropriate type to match the um, the churn characters when you push forward to X. So most hyperplanes won't actually feature in this. Um, and then the others which feature, yeah. That is, so you'll you'll get this curve in there, so that'll give you a line bundle on on the surface, and then you'll have ideal sheaves of points. That's correct. Um, and then you just push that forward to X. So you're not you're not asking the points to be the intersection of the surface with a curve or anything like that. The points the points on the surface will just become points on X. I'm not sure I helped in any way. Sorry. Okay. Uh... Maybe maybe I should continue. Okay. So um, so but as soon as we choose um, R bigger than one, then um, then we, we do not have such a kind of beautiful picture and there could be lots of walls above and below the joy sunk wall. Okay, so, so, um, so the main problem that comes up in this way is that when we start with tilt semi-stable shift of class Vn in the large volume limit, then um, they, they, they are all sheaves, but there could be uh, along these walls, new stable objects that comes up after passing the walls could be very strange two-term complexes in our heart. Uh, so the first claim is that we can get rid of all of them and there is no new, uh, that there is no two-term complexes, they are all sheep. So any new beyond W semi-stable object of Caspian um, is actually a sheaf. So, so the proof, um, let me just give you a kind of main step of the proof. The, uh, so it's just by induction on the rank. If rank is equal to one, then we have seen that J, uh, joy sum wall is the only wall that we have. Above the wall, we only have tilt semi-stable sheaves of rank zero and below the wall, there is no uh, new beyond W semi-stable object. So, the, so it's trivial for rank one. And if R is bigger than one, um, and um, and assume that my object f is uh, f is not um, a sheaf. Then um, then we know that if my object e uh, my sheaf my object f is new beyond w semi-stable, then when I move down from the point beyond w, it must hit a wall because I know it cannot be semi-stable below the line l f. Okay, so it hits the wall and I just look at the destabilizing sequence of that wall. And uh, we can see that one of these uh, uh, destabilizing factor is a sheaf. <coughs> and the other one is an object of type Vn with a smaller rank, which means that its churn character is of the form R prime D prime plus NH minus P prime minus N square H square minus N prime pass in Q HQ over six. So we just replace um, R D beta and M that we had uh, before with new, uh, new ones R prime D prime V prime M prime, but we can uh, control them. So they always in a bounded intervals, which depends on the original D beta and M that we had. That's why, uh, that's why we, 
we, uh, we can uh, apply the induction assumption for churn of Fj and uh, claim that it's uh, actually a sheaf. So our sheaf F is extension of two sheaves. That's why it must be also a sheaf and cannot be a, a two-term complex. Okay, so the next step that now we know that all of them are sheaves, then it's much easier to control uh, uh, and describe all possible walls for them. So let um, we want E to be a, a destabilizing sequence along a wall for L. So we know we know what's happening for the Joyson wall. So so assume that this wall L is any any wall other than J as well. Okay. So we know that there are two types of the wall. The first type is that the destabilizing objects are sheaves and the wall L lies in the safe areas of E1 and E2. By safe areas of E1 and E2, we just mean that all new beyond W semi-stable objects of class of <coughs> E1 and E2 along the wall L are, are sheaves. And when we move uh, above from the line L to the large volume limit, this, uh, the objects of these classes only see sheafy walls. So they can get destabilized only by, by sheaves, okay? And the second type of the walls are uh, when one of these factor is a tilt semi-stable sheaf and the other one is of type VN, as, as I explained, but with lower rank. So, so, um, so for type one wall, we can do, uh, we can uh, process by induction on the discriminant of these sheaves. And for type two wall, we can process by induction on the rank of these uh, uh, destabilizing factors uh, to be able to control all of them, all of these destabilizing factors. Okay, so now let me just explain uh, what's happening in, um, in terms of our causing formula. So whatever I've explained up to now for, in, for, work, uh, for, for weak stability conditions and, uh, and the description of the walls um, are valid for, for any uh, three faults. So, uh, but from now on, since I want to apply it, uh, apply, um, uh, kind of Joyce technique of Hall algebra. That's why now I go to Calabria uh, threefold uh, and um, and apply uh, what causing formula there. Okay, so by 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 Joyce technology of Hall algebra, we can associate to any point beyond W and any class alpha in the numerical groups in the group a rational number which I denoted by J beyond W of alpha which counts a uh, new beyond W semi-stable objects of, um, of class alpha, okay? And as I've explained uh, in, at the beginning, they satisfy a work causing formula, which says that if we, if we uh, assume that B on W plus and B on W minus are two points on two sides of the a wall for class alpha, then um, JBW plus of alpha, um, is equal to GB double minus alpha, alpha, which is just the number of this semi stable uh, number of new BW minus uh, uh, semi stable object of class alpha, plus some extra sentences which uh, which, uh, which comes from strictly semi stable objects along the wall. Okay, so we look at all the possible ways that we can write our class alpha. <laughs> in terms of uh, all the classes in in um, in in the, the heart AB, um, and we assume that they are of the same slope along the wall. So BW zero is is along the wall between BW plus and BW minus. Okay, so this rational uh, rational coefficient C plus minus only depends on the Euler pairing of these uh, of our eyes and the relative size of their slope. Okay, so the easiest case to understand this coefficient is is for for the case that m is equal to two, because um, if you assume that we have only two stable factors a and b, that uh, such that 
for B, W, pa uh, w pass just above the wall, a slope of A is bigger than slope of B, and then below the wall, a slope of A is smaller than slope of B. So, uh, so in one side of the wall, stable objects are parameterized by X1 of A and B, and in the other side is parameterized by X1 of B and A. That's why the difference between the uh, dimension of the stable, uh, stable object is just the difference of the dimension of this 2x group. But since A and B are both stable, they, uh, there is no homomorphism between them. And uh, so the difference is just basically the Euler characteristic of these two classes. Okay, and the sign here depends on the relative uh, slope of alpha one and alpha two, which I'm going to escape that details for now. Okay, so now let's just apply uh, this wall causing formula for the Joyce on wall. So assume that B on W plus and minus are points just above and below the Joyce on wall. Okay, so here I'm just written one of these m equal to two terms in the wall causing formula when alpha one is the class V and alpha two is the class of O minus M shifted by one. <coughs> so the coefficient here is the one that we, that we got here from this simple argument. And um, here uh, we need to put G, uh, J, B, W minus of V which just all of uh, BW minus semi-stable shapes of class V. But it's not hard to see that there is no wall for class V between, uh, between uh, Joyce long wall and, and the large volume limit. So this JBW minus of V is precisely JB infinity of V, which is the number of tilt semi-stable shape of that class. And we know that O minus N, um, is a rigid object, that's why it's counting invariant is just number of uh, line bundle with torsion C1. Uh, and in all other terms in, in this wall causing formula involve only JBW minus of alpha i, where alpha i is, is of non-negative rank and rank is smaller than R minus one. So the only term in this wall causing formula that involves rank one is, uh, sorry, rank R <coughs> is, is just JB infinity of V. And this is the only place that uh, JB infinity of V appears in, in this uh, wall causing formula. Okay, so the next step is to understand and, uh, this uh, JBW plus and minus of uh, class VN. <coughs> So if we start from uh, just below the joist on wall, we know that after passing finite and many walls, we can reach below LF, where there is no uh, new beyond W semi-stable objects of class VN. And we, if we start with uh, BW plus just above the joist on wall, we know that after passing finitely many walls, we can reach large volume limit. And since we know that walls are either of type one or type two by induction on discriminant and rank, we can show that there is a universal formula that writes uh, JBW plus minus of the N in terms of JB uh, infinity of alpha I. It counts tilt semi-stable shifts of that class alpha I, where rank of alpha I is always smaller than or equal to rank of VN, which is R minus one. Okay, now if um, we rearrange this um, wall causing formula for Joy Song wall and uh, replace uh, G, uh, JB double plus of VN with this expression, we immediately get, uh, get that JB infinity of V uh, can be written by universal formula in terms of JB infinity of uh, beta J's, where rank of these beta J's is uh, less than or equal to. Uh, R minus one. Okay, so the final uh, step uh, is to go from tilt stability to uh, tilt stability that we have in the large volume limit to Giesecker stability. And this step is quite straightforward because tilt stability <coughs> dominates Giesecker stability. So, so we know that for any class alpha, 
with positive rank, uh, J B infinity of alpha can be written in terms of the counting J alpha, which counts Gieseker semi-stable shifts of class alpha, plus a universal formula in, in terms of um, J of alpha K, when rank of alpha K is strictly less than rank of alpha. Okay, so if we use that formula and uh, substitute in, in the, for, uh, the formula that we had above, we can write um, rank, uh, or, you know, we can write J of V, uh, which counts Gieseker semi stable shifts of class V in terms of um, uh, counting invariance of lower rank uh, uh, classes. And so by induction process, we can write. Uh, any rank RDT invariance in terms of rank zero DT uh, invariance and uh, with uh, pure uh, dimension two. <coughs> so, so I do not have much time. So I go quickly uh, to the rank zero case. So when when we have rank zero case, uh, when V is of rank zero. Then, uh, then as before, we look at um, a section of OX minus N to E, but in this case, um, S is, is, uh, is not injective. So we need to look at the cone of this section instead of the co-kernel. <coughs> so so uh, the, co uh, the cone is of class Bn by sub rank minus one. And, um, by Toda's result, we know that any new beyond W semi stable object of class Vn for W large is, is the, the drive doll of PT stable pairs. So these are stable pairs in terms of Panda Panda Thomas and Thomas. And um, it's just the drive doll of a stable pair tensor with a line bottom. So, so uh, we know a a description of all of uh, semi-stable objects in the large volume limit for sheets for objects of class Vn. <coughs> and then the next step is to describe O was. So we have Joyce on wall as before, which is uh, uh, which is the wall that um, E and OX minus N shifted by one is making. And the claim is that uh, the destabilizing uh, factors along any other wall. Uh, are either of rank or either rank zero shifts whose chain one h square is less than d h square, which is the chain character of the uh, class that we start with it. And uh, the other factor is rank minus one object. And the claim is this rank minus one object can be destabilized between L and the large volume limit only by rank zero shifts uh, with with chain one lower than dh square. <coughs> That's why by induction on, on uh, dh square, we can actually show that um, we can write all of these rank zero dt invariance in terms of pt invariance, which uh, by Toda or Bridgeline works is equivalent to rank one dt theory. But yeah, but the tricky part for this part is to just show that we can uh, choose n su uh, suitable right that works for all this rank minus one object. Okay, I think that was all that I want to say. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Are there any more questions? May I ask a question? Huh. Oh, uh, yeah, in, in the like in the R equal to one case, like in the uh, uh, rank one case, yeah, uh, you um, you show that the, the co kernel is uh, gives this uh, as long as the severe conditions above the wall of a joint mm -hmm. zone, there there is a this uh, 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 identification of uh, uh, of a GS times peak zero to this uh, uh, moduli of uh, like semi-stable shifts. So uh, in there, is that true that um, that means that every semi-stable shifts, like a Gieseker stable shifts will be of the form like ideal shift of a curve times a line bundle? Uh, yes, I think so, yeah. Um, there, uh, is, there, is there a way to understand what the curve is in terms of that? 
So, uh, I, uh, what, what do you mean? So maybe I, I didn't get your question. What do you mean that we understand the car? So maybe Richard knows better. <laughs> Diana, could you repeat that question, Queen Yang? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, no, I was just trying to understand this statement in rank one that uh, yeah. learn this identification and uh, this choice song, uh, learn this uh, because uh, this choice song moduli, what she described before, all given by like ideal shape of curved tensor line bundle. So learn, does that mean that learn this semi-stable shape of that class is always given by the co-kernel uh, of, uh, of a map from 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 uh, from OX minus n to ideal shape of a curve. In that case, how, how how can I understand what the curve is in terms of the? Uh, so so the, if you if you have a map from O minus n mm -hmm. to the ideal sheaf of some subscheme Z, yeah. Uh -huh. So Z Z is curves and points. Uh -huh. uh, then the co kernel is just the the ideal sheaf of Z inside the surface, the hypersurface of degree uh -huh. n, that's, you know, that this, um, yeah, sorry. So if you, have a, if you have a map from O minus n to the ideal sheaf of Z, then mm -hmm. compose it all the way to the structure sheaf, all right? Mm -hmm. And that gives you a degree n hypersurface. Mm -hmm. So what you end up with, so what that data is, is a degree n hypersurface, Mm -hmm. with the subschemes Z inside it. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And then you just take the ideal sheet. The co-kernel is just the ideal sheaf of Z inside that hypersurface, uh -huh. considered as a torsion sheaf pushed forward to X. Uh -huh. And then the statement is that they all arise in this way. So if you, if you take any sheaf of the same, any torsion sheaf of the same churn character, which is semi-stable, then it has to be of that form. It has to be kind of supported on a, a degree n hypersurface. And on that hypersurface, it has to have rank one and, and it's just an ideal sheaf on that hypersurface. I see. Of, of some of some subscheme Z. Of course, if that Z is a Cartier divisor, mm -hmm. it's just a cur nice curve, then of course you're just getting a line bundle on on the um on the surface. But in general, you get a line bundle sort of modified at some points with some ideal sheaf singularities. Uh -huh. I see, great. Thanks. Sure. Uh, but yeah, but we cannot say anything more, I think, for the care. So can, can I ask a question? Sure. So if, if, if you take P3 instead of a Calabria threefold, mm -hmm. can you use, so I mean, for P3, I think we know exactly which ideal, which Hilbert scheme of curves are non empty. And could you then use this to say exactly which moderate space of higher rank sheets are non empty and get some of sharp Bogomorov Giesiger type inequalities that way? I'm glad you're asking Sahela because I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so I, I I didn't I didn't talk about this question before. So I I I think we can do something, but I'm but I'm not quite sure result is is helpful for proving non-emptiness. Um because yeah, because in all of the examples that we have, you know. You know, so, so what what we are what we what we are gaining out of this is uh, is um, is basically surjectivity, controlling all all of them of Caspian, and the fact that they push forward is uh, is a slope semi-stable, which is pro which is trivial for irreducibility. So I think yeah. For non emptiness, we can, we are, we are but I mean, I mean non emptiness of multi spaces of higher rank sheets. But whether you could tell exactly which, say, rank two, multi spaces of rank two vector bundles or sheets, <coughs> non empty. Uh...
Oh, I see. So, so, so you're saying that you know, if I start, um, if I start with a class um, uh, that looks like Vian, and uh, then you want that there, we prove non-emptiness or emptiness of high rank vector bundles. So because because I uh, my guess is so we are similar trick so we can show that if the class Vn satisfies some properties then they must always be rank one on their support. So maybe I didn't get your question. Maybe um, Aaron's point is that so start with that class that you said. So you, you have those rank one sheaves. We understand those. We know they're non-empty. Mm -hmm. And then wall cross across the Joysong wall. And then, uh, and then we know that we get destabilized by some rank two sheaves, right? And so the space, so these rank two sheaves have to be non empty. This moduli space of rank two sheaves has to be non empty. In a, yeah, so as we cross the Joysong wall, our rank one sheaves suddenly pick up a map to O minus N shifted by one, and you take the co cone of, co -cone of that map and, and you get a rank two sheaf. So now you're you're producing rank two sheaves of certain churn characters. I think, I think we should discuss it in we more can, place, yeah. yeah, it seems feasible. We, we should talk about it. Okay. Other, other questions? Well, if not, then uh, let's thank Sahela again and 